Hi, my name is Imogen, I'm 19 years old and I'm currently on a gap year. However, we are not talking about my gap year today. Instead, we are going to be reading through my geography personal statement. I already have a video up on my channel where I talked through my politics personal statement. I then decided that I wanted to change course over the course of my gap year and that is why I then ended up doing geography. So obviously my personal statement needed to change a little bit and I'm supposedly a year older, a year wiser when I wrote this one. When I looked back at my politics personal statement in the last video, it was a little bit embarrassing and there were parts in there where I was like, I can't believe I actually wrote that. So hopefully today's video and this personal statement is going to be a little bit better. But I haven't looked at this since November time when I sent it off. So eek, we'll see. My politics personal statement was successful in the fact that it got me offers to all the places that I applied to. And so when I wrote my geography personal statement, sorry, my laptop is here, which has my personal statement on it. So when I rewrote my geography personal statement, there wasn't a need to kind of rewrite the entire thing. It was more a case of adapting what I'd already done. When I wrote my personal statement for politics, the focus was on power and powerlessness. However, when I changed this to work for geography, I changed the overall theme of my personal statement to the relationship between people and place. That is enough of an introduction. Let's get on to the first line of my personal statement. Two years ago, two minutes from home, I walked past a police cordon following a murder in my leafy suburb in Mid-Essex. It was unusual, but not a one-off, a stark reminder that the relationship between people and place, between notions of identity and belonging is complex and multi-layered. So that's not your typical opening for a personal statement. And you might be thinking, Imogen, where on earth is this going? But I think that is exactly the point. When I was doing some research for my personal statement, I came across a personal statement on the student room by a postgraduate student, actually, who had written a kind of story as the start of their personal statement. And I just found that really engaging. And I thought, well, if I find that engaging to read, then surely the people who are reading my personal statement and are kind of analysing it from the universities are going to also find it interesting if I put my personal link to the issue that I'm talking about in my personal statement in the first line. However, I think it's really, really important to point out that even though I've done a personal link to this issue, it also links to the theme of my personal statement and it fits in really well. If it didn't, I don't know if I would necessarily start off my personal statement in that way. I'd probably go for a more kind of classic approach, which I did with my geography personal statement the year before. So my personal statement continues. As a social scientist and member of youth parliament, I became passionately involved in debates around issues such as knife crime and made a dispatch box speech on the universality of fear among the demographic that I represented. Personal experience had driven me to research beyond the mediated projection of densely populated urban settings to discover a more nuanced reality. With the steepest rise in knife crime appearing outside large cities, the ubiquitous fear around previously safe places was understandable. So as you can see there, not only have I managed to introduce the key theme of my personal statement, I've also talked about why it interests me particularly, and I've even managed to squish in a little extracurricular activity in there. Although it's really important to know, only put extracurricular activities in if they are relevant to what you're talking about. The other thing to note is that even if your extracurricular doesn't obviously link to your subject, there's still often a way that you can find a link between your subject and the extracurricular that you want to talk about. So one prime example of this would be, I did a speech in the House of Commons and that was my extracurricular, which surely you'd be thinking, well, that links to politics, not geography. But actually I was talking about the distribution of crime and the impact that it has on communities, which I learned about in human geography. So why not put that in as well? Additionally, in the way that I worked my extracurricular into my personal statement, I made sure that I talked about the research element of making my speech in the House of Commons and not necessarily just doing the speech because the universities that I were applying to were all research-based universities and so that's something they're really interested in. The next paragraph of my personal statement reads, my scholarly interest in geopolitics and the polarisation between people and place followed a visit to District 6 in Cape Town. The apartheid regime clearly demonstrated the consequences of a concentration of power within a state. In my EPQ, I explored how 20 years after its end, one specific community, District 6, is still hampered by the aftermath of displacement and post-apartheid, the social structures ensure that the prejudice that the displacement symbolised is still very much present. That section might sound very similar to what I wrote in my politics personal statement, but I have changed the theme from power and powerlessness to people and place, which is certainly more geographic. The course that I really wanted to go to at LSE and a couple of the other courses that I was applying to were human geography only. And so I made the conscious decision in my personal statement to only focus on human geography. 
When presenting my EPQ, I was inspired by Davis's 1981 model Apartheid City to reflect on other instances of displacement and the impact of location on the meaning of place and belonging. This gave me an insight into critical geopolitics, the notions of the meaning of a defined space and the negotiation and renegotiation of the identity of those associated with that space. I actually found this personal statement a lot easier to write because I didn't feel like there was as much pressure for me to have read academic books. Um, but actually, I think there was a lot more value in me talking about something that I actually really, really understood, which in this case was Davis's model apartheid city. So I'd actually researched that for my EPQ and it was fascinating. I was so pleased when I could put that into my personal statement because actually I feel like this personal statement reflects me a lot more than my politics one because I'm genuinely more interested in some of the stuff in here. Continuing on with my personal statement, my geography studies sparked an interest in the plight of refugees. I attended a screening of Ai Weiwei's Human Flow and a lecture by war artist Arabella Dorman. These showed the sheer scale of displacement the world is currently facing and the ever-pressing need for a solution to fill what Cohen 2017 terms the gap of the imagination. There's a couple of different things that I want to say about this section and I think something really important that I really do want to highlight is the fact that it's really easy to get caught up in the idea that your personal statement needs to be full of academic books, but actually there are so many other ways of showing your interest in a subject that are equally as academic or equally as relevant to your personal statement. So for example, I've talked about a film showing of um, something called Human Flow, which is like a documentary all about the plight of refugees all around the world. And it kind of draws together the similarities between all of them. And I just saw this as a listing for my local cinema. I'm interested in the plight of refugees. This was way before I'd even started writing my personal statement. I dragged my entire family along with me um, and I just found it really, really fascinating. So I thought that's a really important thing to put in because that really has helped to spark my interest in studying geography at university. So if that actually has had an impact on you wanting to study something, then put it in your personal statement because the universities are going to see that you've got some genuine passion, even if it's not necessarily the most academic book that you could have read, it's still gonna show that you are genuinely interested in your subject. Also, LSE specifically have a public lecture series, which I'd actually been to before I even thought about applying to LSE as a university, and I'd really enjoyed some of their lectures. So when it came to writing my personal statement, I knew I wanted to do a little bit focusing on refugees. So I just looked through online because they have recordings of all of their public lectures. And I found a podcast all about refugees and this solution called Refugia, which is what I've then wrote, written about in my personal statement because I found it really interesting and it linked really well. So I do think that using podcasts and other ways of receiving information as well as books is still really important. I cannot emphasize that enough, honestly. Let's continue on. Listening to Van Heer slash Cohen's proposal of Refugia, it's clear to see the benefits from a radical solution. But District 6 on a small scale illustrates the same polarity as with the global refugee situation. The higher ideals of integration, inclusion in nation states resolving as much displacement as they create are set against a solution based on a more pragmatic reality. Just as post-apartheid District 6 residents have still not returned, the plight of Rohingyas, Afghans, Somalis and other long-displaced people are in the hands of nation-states that have rarely fulfilled their responsibilities to refugees set out in international law. Scale and urgency make a pragmatic solution persuasive. I am sceptical and share critics' concerns. I've taken this theme of my EPQ of District 6 and I've run it all the way through my personal statement. I actually once think somebody said to me, you're theme of your personal statement should run through it like a needle and a thread. I don't know who said this to me, but actually looking back, that was really, really good advice. So I'm now sharing that with you guys. Another thing that is so important in your personal statement is to have an opinion. You do not want to be sitting on the fence in your personal statement. We're not saying I read X book and it was interesting. Absolutely not. You want to say I read this book and I thought it was really interesting because I thought this was a really radical solution like what I've said here. However, there are problems with it because this can't be put into reality for these reasons. And that shows that you have not only understood the book, but you have also thought critically about it. In my previous personal statement, I wrote quite a similar paragraph to this and it didn't really fit with the rest of my personal statement. But given that this one is based more on place, space and migration, this definitely does fit more. My interest in humanitarianism also coincided with my geographical studies last year. I enjoyed learning about different types of migration and how these are portrayed by both national and international media. I love to travel and experience different cultures firsthand. Last summer, I traveled solo around Southeast Asia and Australia. 
Recently, I visited the UN in Geneva for work experience, gaining a greater insight into how a global organisation works to tackle the geographical challenges of climate change and migration, but at the same time maintaining political neutrality. There's not much to say about that paragraph because it's quite similar to my previous personal statement. However, I have focused more on migration and climate change and the migration that results from climate change because again, that knits in with the rest of this personal statement, which is the aim. Finally, I have written, presently I am taking a gap year from my studies to travel and experience different languages and cultures. Over the summer, I traveled around Eastern Europe and have spent the last two months working in Germany where I'm gaining fluency in the language. Obviously, I wrote this in November, so I hadn't actually planned the whole of my gap year. I didn't actually really know what I was going to be doing. Um, and that's why it says I was only in Germany for two months when I actually ended up doing nearly three. Um, also, an important thing to say, you are trying to sell yourself to the university. So, for example, I've written I'm gaining fluency in the language. I could have written I'm learning German. However, if you say gaining fluency, it makes it sound like you're progressing quite a lot more than maybe just learning. Learning sounds a little bit more passive, so it's really about using the correct language in order to really sell yourself to the university. In January, I will be working with VSO on a three-month placement in Darjeeling, Nepal, helping local communities with sustainable development and education projects. I hope working in the field with a highly respected NGO will give a greater understanding to my geographical studies of how people, the economy and the environment shape a country's development. I wouldn't say this is the strongest final sentence, it doesn't really pack a punch, it's not got that wow factor, but it's really important that I didn't just leave it as, well, I've spent three months in Germany and that's all I'm doing on my gap year, because the universities might be thinking, is she reapplying? Like, what are the plans? Is she doing nothing for six months or whatever? And so it's really important to kind of show that at least you have some plans for your gap year, even if they're not fully formed or anything. In that final sentence, I have used three kind of buzzwords for geography. It's really difficult when talking about buzzwords because I don't think there's any perfect set of words that need to go in any personal statement because the point is it's personal to you. But I was quite happy that I'd finished on the economy, environment and development because they are really important terms to do with geography and studying human geography. So that is the end of my geography personal statement. I am so, so much happier with this personal statement than I was with my politics one. I feel like it represents me as a person and also as a student so much better. I got into LSE, UCL, King's College London, Manchester and York University with this personal statement. So I do think this was quite successful. I really hope you have found this video useful. If you have, then definitely do give it a big thumbs up and leave me a comment down below letting me know where you're applying to and what you're hoping to study. Also, subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more applying to university, university content or gap year content because that's all here on my channel. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you next time with a new video.